Hi folks, welcome to part two of 6.3. We're gonna talk about addition and subtraction of cosine. So here we go, we have the cosine formulas. We have an addition one and we have a subtraction one. And I want us to notice a few things. So we've got cosine of one angle And then we're gonna either add a second angle or we're gonna subtract a second angle. Now, when we add two angles together and then we take the cosine, we actually have a subtraction in our formula. On the flip side, when we have a minus sign because we're subtracting two angles, we actually have a plus sign in our formula. So the signs for cosine are reversed than they were for sine. Okay. Now let's take our formulas and we're gonna go ahead and apply them to example number one here, where we're trying to find an exact value for cosine of pi over 12. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna imagine that I had something over 12 and something else over 12 and something pi, and I either wanted to add or subtract to get one pi over 12. And when I do that, I might notice that if I had three pi over two, 12 minus two pi over 12, that would get me back to one pi over 12. Now, if we reduce those, we'll get pi over four minus pi over six, and the reduced form shows us that it's a little bit nicer values that we can get from the unit circle. So let's go ahead and use this subtraction formula. So cosine of u minus v equals cosine u cosine v plus sine u sine v. And everywhere I see a u, I'm going to go ahead and put this pi over four, so that's gonna go in for the u. And everywhere I see a v, I'm gonna put pi over six. And so when I do that, I end up with cosine pi over four, cosine pi over six, plus sine pi over four, sine pi over six. Now, if I use my unit circle to find my values, I'll get root two over two times root three over two plus root two over two times one half. And that will give me root six over four plus root two over four, or as we typically write it as one fraction, root six plus root two all over four. Okay, so very similar to the sign questions, except we want to make sure we use the right formula and we have the correct plus or minus sign in there. Okay, let's take a look at example number two. So we're going to express as a trig function of one angle. Okay, we only want to have one angle in our answer. And so I notice that I have cosine, cosine, and then sine, oh, this is supposed to be sine, sine, sine. And so that means that I'm gonna be using one of the cosine formulas. Now, the minus sign here means that I actually had a plus sign in the original. So cosine, u cosine v minus sine u sine v equals cosine of u plus v. Okay, so again, that minus sign in the formula is actually from the sum of two angles for cosine. And so if we take the angles, we have angle u is 225, plus angle V is 30. And so we'll end up with cosine of 255 degrees. And that is how we express this trig function as a single angle. 
All right, let's do one verify the identity for cosine before we move on to tangent. So for cosine, if we're verifying the identity, again, it's really nice to start with the side that's asking you, use one of the formulas you know and make it look like the simpler side. So when we apply the formula here, we'll get cosine x cosine 5 pi over 2 plus sine x sine 5 pi over 2 and we want to make that equal to sine x. Now, if you look at your unit circle, you might notice that 5 pi over 2 is not on your unit circle. We have 0, we have pi over 2, we have pi, we have 3 pi over 2. This, when we get back to 0, is actually 4 pi over 2. That makes this one equal to 5 pi over 2. So it's actually in the same place as pi over 2. We just call it a different name. So we can use the x and y values from there to fill in our equation. And we're going to get cosine of x times 0 plus sine of x times 1 equals sine x. And we know that anything times 0 is going to give me 0. And then sine x times 1 is sine x. So the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. And I have verified this identity. OK, let's move on to tangent. So addition and subtraction of tangent. These formulas are definitely much more complicated looking. But one of the things that you can do is you can say, I know that tangent is sine divided by cosine. And so I just took the green one is the formula for sine, and the orange one is the formula for cosine, and I put them on top of each other. That is a valid form of the formula. Some folks, though, they really like to simplify it so everything's in terms of tangents, and that's where this other formula comes from. I would say, though, that you're welcome to use either version. It doesn't really matter to me. And the same goes for the subtraction formula. Here is the cleaned up version with tangent, but this is the cosine on the bottom here, and this is the sine on the top here. So you can use either version to answer these questions. Okay, so let's take a look at finding the exact value of tangent of seven pi over 12. And so I'm going to approach this the same way. I'm going to say, what pi over 12? And then what pi over 12 could get me to 7 pi over 12? And I notice that if I have 9 pi over 12 and I subtract 2 pi over 12, that I'll get 7 pi over 12. But maybe a way that I could write that so it's unit circle friendly is 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 6. OK. If we go ahead and use our formula here, I'm going to go ahead and use our um, sine over cosine one. I tend to like that one a little bit better. But again, you're welcome to use whichever version you like. So I have sine of 3 pi over 4 cosine of pi over 6 minus cosine 3 pi over 4 sine of pi over 6 all over cosine of 3 pi over 4 cosine pi over 6 minus sine, oops, plus sine 3 pi over 4 cos, no, sine pi 
over 6. Okay, let's see what happens when we plug in our values. So I have root 2 over 2 times root 3 over 2 minus a negative root 2 over 2 times 1 half all over root 2 over 2 times 1 half plus root 2 over 2, oh, this is a negative, root 2 over 2 times sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, and that should be a root 3. Okay, let's see what we can clean up here. I've got neg a root 6 plus root 2 over 4 on the top, all over negative root 6 plus root 2 over 4 on the bottom. Now the nice thing is they're both over 4, so those 4s actually reduce, and I'm left with root 6 plus root 2 over negative root 6 plus root 2. And that would be an acceptable form of the answer for number 1. Okay, we've got one more example here and we're going to go ahead and verify this identity. And so I noticed that this left hand side is just begging me to use our sum formula for tangent and I want to try and make it look like the other side. So let's see what we get. We have tangent x plus tangent pi over 4 over 1 minus tangent x tangent pi over 4. So I chose this version of the formula because I noticed the other side has tangents. It doesn't have sine or cosine. If it did have sine or cosine, then I would use the other version. But because this one has tangents, I'm going to try and match that. And then it's just a question of using your unit circle values. And you know that tangent of pi over 4 is 1. And so this one also goes to 1. And it actually cleans up pretty quick. We've got tangent x plus 1 over 1 minus tangent x equals 1 plus tangent x over 1 minus tangent x. And just to be super picky here, I want to switch the order of those so it matches exactly. And I'll get 1 plus tangent x over 1 minus tangent x equals 1 plus tangent x over 1 minus tangent x. And I've got both sides equal to each other. So I have verified that identity. All right, folks, that's it for part two. In part three, we're going to be going over a variety of applications for this sum and difference formulas. So move on to part three when you are ready. Thanks so much.